some vocabulary we need to learn is uh, what does sum mean and what does difference mean. Well, let's see. The sum of 6 and 2 is 6 plus 2, or 8. So sum is an addition of two quantities, numbers. The sum of 2 and 6 is 2 plus 6, which is also 8. So when we're talking about sum, it doesn't matter which order we write it, because either way, you know, 3 plus 4 is 7, and 4 plus 3 is also 7. So you can interchange addition. That's called the commutative property. Um, however, difference. The difference between 6 and 2 is 6 minus 2, or 4. 6 minus 2 gives 4, and that's what difference means. But the problem is, the difference between 2 and 6 is this. You start with the first number, 2, then you subtract the second number, 6. The difference between 2 and 6 is 2 minus 6. Now, 2 minus 6, if you have $2 and you then subtract $6, are you going to go in debt? Are you going to owe dollars? Two dollars on your credit card? Buy something worth six dollars? Your credit card will show a balance of negative four, right? So, six minus two is positive four, but two minus six is negative four. So, these, these are not the same thing. Six minus two is not the same as two minus six. So, when we're Working with difference, we got to be careful. We always write the first number, subtract the second number. Okay, let T represent your taxes for the year, right? So, the sum of my taxes and a preparation fee of $100 would look like this. T plus 100. So, for example, if your taxes were $3,000, your fee would be $3,000 plus 100, 3,100, right? Or your taxes might be $2,400 plus the fee of 100, that would be 2,500. We use letters to represent numbers when we don't know what the number is yet. That's one use of algebra, is to write T in place of your taxes, because you don't know what your taxes are going to be yet this year. So we'll just call it T for now. But this is what you're going to have to pay, your taxes plus the preparation fee. So T plus 100 represents what you have to pay. We could let S, the letter S, represent the sale price of a car, and the letter F could represent the auctioneer's fee, if you sell your car through an auctioneer. So, look at this sentence. The difference between sale price and fee would be, see if you can write it down, at any time, press pause in the bottom left corner and see if you can get the next step. It would be S minus F, right? For example, you could sell your car for $5,000. Uh, the auctioneer could sell it for 5000 and charge you a fee of, let's say, 2%. 2% of 5,000 is, in fact, $100. So what you would get is 4,900. If he only sold the car for $4,500, um, and he took a fee of 2%, well, 4,500 subtract 90 leaves you with 4,410, right? Or he might even sell it for $10,000. And 2% of 10,000 is 200, and so you would get 9,800. So 
S minus F is what you would get. The sale price minus the fee. The difference between the sale price and the fee. So again, you know, we're using letters to represent numbers that which we, we don't know what they're going to be yet. Now, let's have T represent price of a movie ticket. And if you were paying for three people to go to the movies, the difference between $50 out of a $50 note, let's say, the difference between $50 and three movie tickets could be written like this. $50 subtract three times T times the, and T was the price of the movie ticket. So, so for example, um, 50 minus 3 times 10, if T was equal to 10, right? So if T was equal to 10, and that would be 50 minus 30, $20 is what you'd have left. If the tickets cost um, $12 each, it would be 50 minus 3 times, and in place of T would be 12. So that would be 50 minus 36, and you'd have $14 left. Okay, so um, and and j just as a side note, and if if you have you know three times t, that's simply written three t, three tickets. So three times a ticket is just three tickets. Just like um, if you have two apples in a bag, you don't say I have two times an apple, which would be correct. You simply say I have two apples. 2a, right? So 2 times a is the same as 2a. Or if you have um, 5 bananas on the table, you don't say I have 5 times a banana. It's a lot simpler just to say I have 5 bananas, 5b. So multiplication in algebra is simply written, uh, it's written with a multiplication dot, but, but even simpler, you know, if, if two numbers are beside each other, it means multiply. So for example, you know, x y would actually be x multiplied by y. The difference between 4 and x. See if you can write down what that would be. Where x represents a number. It could be any number. But the difference between 4 and x. Is it 4 minus x? Right? So if x was the number 1, you, you would have 4 minus 1, 3, right? Now, the difference between x and 4, write that down. The difference between x and 4. Would that be x minus 4? So, for example, if x was 10, this would be 10 minus 4. Or six. Okay, two more words we need to know um, in vocabulary with algebra is product and quotient. Let's have a look at product first. The product of three and five is three multiplied by five or 15. Now, bear in mind, this can also be written 3 multiplied by 5 with parentheses, which is also 15, or you could write it this way, 3 multiplied by 5, both in parentheses. The product of 5 and 3 is 5 multiplied by 3, 15, and again, write it two different ways. And any time, press pause in the bottom left corner and and to get the next step. So 5 times 3, or you could have 5 times 3 like that. The quotient, next. The quotient of 10 and 2 is 10 divided by 2. In algebra, we almost always do this. 10 over. 2, which of course is 5, right? Now, notice that it's the first number divided by the second number. 
Look at this. The quotient of 2 and 10 is 2 divided by 10, or 2 over 10. Now, that is not 5. If you put this fraction in lowest terms, 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 10 goes 5 times, and this is 1 fifth. It's a big difference between 5 and 1 fifth. So the quotient, with quotient, we've got to be careful. It's always the first number divided by the second number. Okay, now let's take uh, a variable h. A letter in algebra is called a variable, right? Um, let's say h represents a hay harvest. And my grandfather, uh, his rent was half the hay har harvest every year. Now, hay harvest changes every year depending on how much water you've got and, how, uh, and depending on the weather. Um, so let's have a look at this. The quotient of hay harvest amount and 2 would be written h over 2, right? So if the hay harvest was 1,000 tons, the quotient of the hay harvest and 2 would be 1,000 over 2, 500 tons, and that's what his rent would be. Or um, it could he might make um, 1,500 tons of hay that year, the quotient of that and 2 would be 750. But in any case, whatever it is, it's h over 2, the harvest divided by 2. Where h is a, a variable, it's a, 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 le a letter that represents a number that changes. Okay, look at this one now. The quotient of $100 in k, where k represents number of kids. So if you had $100 and you want to split it among amongst um, a group of children, well, the quotient of $100 in K would look like this. 100 divided by K, or 100 over K. So if there were five children, 100 over 5 is 20, each one gets $20. Or if there were 10 children, 100 over 10, each child gets $10, right? Let's have a look at product now. The product of 3 and x. Write down what you think that is. The product of 3 and x. Is it 3 times x? Yep. Um, or write it a different way. Write it with parentheses. 3 times x. Can we write it a different way again? We can do this, 3 times x, and there's another way, just this, 3x. That's 3 times x. So let's review that really quickly. I mean, again, you know, if you have um, 3 um, cars, that's 3 times c, right? 3 times a car. But it's a lot simpler just to say 3c. So in algebra, when we have a number beside a letter, that means multiply. Or um, 3, um, or 30p would be 30 pencils, let's say. 30 times a pencil. Now, let's have this variable n represent the number of loaves of bread you buy on a shopping trip. Okay? So, n loaves at 250. $2.15 each, how could we write that expression? Press pause and try and get it. Well, wouldn't it be, let's say we bought 10 loaves of bread, it would then be 215 times 10, right? So that would cost you $21.50. If you only bought two loaves of bread, that would be 215 times 2, $4.30, right? If you buy n loaves of bread, it is $2.15 times n, right? Or simply 215n, for sure. 
So we don't need the multiplication dot. We can just write 215 and put the N beside it. That means multiply. Okay. How about this one? N credit hours at $119 per credit. How would you write that expression? Press pause and try and figure it out. And again, I'll give you an easy example. If you were taking 10 credits, how much would that cost? It's 119 per credit. So would that be 119 times 10? $1,190, right? If you took um, two credits, it would be $119 times two, which is 200 and is that $238? So if we take N credits, where N represents the number of credits, which we don't know yet, the, the cost of taking N credits is 119, whoops, 119 times N, 119 times N, right? Or just 119 N dollars, right? 